Back when I was on the night shift for my old warehouse manager job, I would often see things move about between the colossal volume of shelves, platforms, stocks of boxes all throughout the nights I worked. I was the manager of the five-man team we had working there, and it was usually during the start of the shift, forcing me to endure the remaining six hours with the knowledge that there was something in there with us, watching. It took weeks to find, but once we found out what it was, we all quit immediately the morning after. Let me tell you about the night we found what had been plaguing our fears for weeks on end, forcing us to live out the nightmare every single evening until leaving the job entirely. And it only gets worse from here. You seen anything yet? Only the usual. Boxes have moved again. Several sections of the warehouse had their lights shut off. We're gonna have to do something about this tonight, boss. Any more of this and I'll need an exorcist or some shit. My co-worker, Steve, chuckled momentarily, but returned back to work once our interaction had ended, with my nod signaling our time to get moving. Steve was a stocky man of about 35 years of age. There wasn't much that was going to get past him if we did end up finding it. But there was no telling what kind of damage it would end up doing. Just the other night, I alone had been left to experience what pure darkness felt like. With the shelves around me shifting as that thing must have scuttled past, looking for whoever had trapped in its field of shadows. Coming to work with the very knowledge we were being hunted would bewilder many into thinking, why on earth bother? We bothered because this was our livelihood at stake, and some damned creature wasn't going to intimidate us into fleeing from it, losing our jobs in the process. We had gone to the higher-ups about the situation, but upon delivering our concerns about the creature wandering the corridors of the warehouse, prowling them in search of us, its prey, we were retorted with a surge of laughter and told to leave before they docked our pay. Well, it was in our hands now. Nobody could help us from here on out. Now that week in particular was a bad one. There were constant screams echoing all throughout the warehouse every single night. And something kept turning off the lights, continuously suspending us in darkness. The warehouse workers and I were sick of it. So our plan that night was to wait by each light switch, hiding behind a pile of boxes for cover, and then the man who was unfortunate enough to be chosen would scream, both meaning that us and whatever thing was about to turn off the lights near him would be able to hear him. Now for us, that was our time to rush out and try grabbing it. Or so we thought. Around 20 minutes had passed as we prepped the hiding spots next to each light source and went over the plan one final time to ensure that nothing could have been misheard, misinterpreted, etc. The clock read 2 a.m. and we were ready. Positions, everyone! I called out. I heard a short burst of ruffling and scurrying about as boxes were moved in front of each worker positioned by one of the five light switches dotted around the room. It was now time to wait. The creature was on its way, but this time we were hunting it. For hours we stayed there, motionless, incapable of movement as the slightest sound might tip off the creature, making it aware of the trap we had set, foiling our plans to capture it. Sweat had been leaking down my shirt and swelling between my hips and belt. It was an unimaginable discomfort, but it made it all the more worth waiting for the eventual relief of ending this nightmare once and for all. After practically the entire shift, the alarm finally sounded. It was Steve's scream coming from the northern light switch. I burst out of the boxes surrounding me, sweat splashing all around me as I bolted in his direction. Now at first his screams were untainted by pain and were merely him sounding off the alarm we had planned. But the further I ran towards him, the more horrific they grew. There was a nauseous element to the screams, which had now turned to shrieks of agony as I heard him yell out, begging whatever it was attacking him to stop. Steve, a six-foot-tall, 35-year-old stocky man, shrieking. Whatever it was that he had found must be strong enough to leave such an inexplicable amount of damage on such a hulk of a man. 
that we were almost upon him. I could see the figures of the other three sprinting towards him through the shelves, but by the time we'd reached his position, the screams had stopped. And the scene before us caused our insides to turn outwards. There was little left of Steve. Now, it's not fair on anyone to recount what state his corpse was left in, but it was certainly not left as a whole. We all looked at one another. Our eyes widened to the size of planets in pure terror of what monster could have possibly done this. Then came a howl. <laughs> We grabbed together what was left of Steve and darted towards the exit towards the far corner of the warehouse, the opposite direction to the creature by the other end. As we ran, the lights once again shut off, and by the time we reached the exit, we had begun hearing a set of four footsteps pounding towards us with enough velocity to knock off the products lining the shelves it must have been running past. Upon our exit, we phoned every emergency service we possibly could, signaling that we were literally holding the mauled corpse of our friend after barricading the exit and hiding in our cars, awaiting the arrival of the emergency services. The reports came back the next day of a hole embedded in the side of the warehouse. It had been forcibly ripped open just hours before, and they couldn't identify any animal capable of tearing through sheer metal, as well as ripping apart a six-foot giant just minutes before. We all quit the morning after. The company gave us money as severance, but the amount given was drastically increased, so much so that we kept our mouths shut and used some of the bonus to pay for Steve's funeral a couple months later. The warehouse was deemed unsafe and shut down in the coming weeks after the incident and struck from all records by the company. Demolished, too. But the four of us that remain knew that getting rid of the building didn't get rid of whatever had hunted within it. I stepped into the office feeling uncertain. My previous workplace had been extremely toxic, so I had to resign. It was quite easy to get this job. I'd had a few experiences as a professional photographer for various event magazines, and I knew just how to capture moments at any event. Little had I known how much I had been sought after by this company. The soft, pink-themed environment poured a homey feeling all over me. It felt so amazing. I'd been given a personal office, a first in my six-year career, and it was in a cozy, quiet corner. I moved through the tables in the open office, which was designed for the multiple writers and journalists that filled the first floor. I returned the greetings of my new colleagues and settled down in my office. Time to get to work! I got out my laptop and looked through the events I'd covered in my previous job. The smile of the celebrity bride looked genuine enough as she stared lovingly at her new husband. My old boss had called it cliché trash, but the editorial board of Finesse Magazine loved it. I felt so appreciated from the very moment I stepped into the interview room. There was a knock on the door. I put my laptop to sleep as my new boss, Mr. Caleb, walked in. I rose and smoothed my pants. You settling in fine, Justin? I am, thank you, I replied as he sat in one of the chairs opposite mine. I also took my seat. He informed me of a special event that he needed me to cover. It was a secret event that the magazine desperately needed, and he believed that I was the right man for the job. It's extremely confidential, and it should be kept between the two of us. I'm aware you're a smart man. I've watched your work over the years, and I've noticed how subtle and meticulous you are. You can blend into the crowd and produce a wonderful result. I'm counting on you. He promised to give me more details as soon as he was sure that I could be trusted. But he left me confused. I wasn't expecting this on my very first day at work. Secrets? Confidentiality? What was next? Skeletons under my table? I attended three events that day and returned to work to do some editing. By the end of the day, Mr. Caleb visited me again, asking me if I would be able to cover the secret event. Being a lover of adventure, I'd considered his offer throughout the day, so I said, yes. He seemed pleased, but not quite convinced, but he promised to give me the rest of the details the next day. 
I couldn't sleep that night. My eyes were wide awake as I stared at the ceiling. What kind of job did Mr. Caleb have for me? The next day, my boss showed up at my office as expected. He asked for the pictures taken the previous day, then moved to the real business. He told me about a group of elites who believed that they ran the town. He had gotten a tip that they had meetings every Friday by midnight at an abandoned bungalow, and he needed someone reliable to take pictures for proof. He had tried time after time to uncover the dirty secrets of the elites without any success. He revealed how he had owned a popular crime magazine, but it had been closed off by the elites. I listened to him with budding excitement as I formulated a plan. I had to be there during the secret meeting. That Friday, I wore my most inconspicuous clothes, a black hoodie and black pants with a face cap. I drove towards the darker part of town and parked two streets before the street where the abandoned building stood. It was dark when I got to the building and found my way to the basement. I put on my torch when I was sure that the place was empty and looked around. The basement was empty, but candles stood at different positions in the room. A stain that was possibly blood was splattered on the floor. Something terrible must have happened here. I took a few pictures and kept looking around. I couldn't continue my observation because I began to hear noises. I turned off the torch and ran to the hiding place which Mr. Caleb had told me about. I got a good view from the corner where I stood. The dim light was turned on as men and women began to walk into the room with red hooded robes. I took a few pictures. I tried to see the faces, and a few were familiar. The mayor, the town doctor, the man who owned almost all the grocery stores in town, and the rich heiress whose son got married last month were amongst the few. I was terrified, but also excited. I continued to take pictures as the Eleven Elites began to make weird noises that sounded like chants. Someone lit the candles and the dim light was turned off. The time has come to renew the oath we took. The time has come to complete the circle of brotherhood. The grocery store owner began while the others sighed in agreement. We have been twelve since the death of old Gordon and we need someone fresh to complete the circle. I wondered why they kept saying they were 12. I could see just 11 people, so someone was missing. Let's begin the ritual. I took a few pictures as they brought out a goat. Were they going to sacrifice it? They began to increase their chance, and they seemed to go into a trance-like state. Bring him in, the grocer said. I felt so intrigued. Mr. Caleb would be so proud of me. I hadn't only uncovered a secret cult, I was about to discover their new member. I kept taking pictures. Until I froze. Someone tapped my shoulder. I turned around in terror and the person hushed me. Mr. Caleb? What was he doing here? I was about to ask why he couldn't trust me when my eyes fell on his clothes. For a moment, my heart skipped a beat. He was wearing the red robe. He was a part of them. And then it all dawned on me. I was the new arrival, and I was in deep trouble. The old man could sense that I had connected the pieces. His grin shone through the dark. Follow me and join the Brotherhood. If you do, you will live. I detected the undertone. If I didn't follow him, I would die. So I followed him, obediently, like a sheep to the slaughter. The whole group seemed pleased to see me. They smiled in approval. Six months later. Oh God, what a nightmare my life has become. I'm now a permanent member of the group with no way out. The worst part is that I've been unwillingly sucked into a dirty world of crime and corruption. The group plans unspeakable things during the meetings, and then every member is tasked with the execution. Trust me, it's a hellhole. And you, you sitting there and watching my story, if you think that you have a free will or control at least your world, well, let me break it to you. 
You're just a pawn. It's all controlled by such elite brotherhoods, such shitty men and women. I hate being one of them.